Shame. I'm in favor of fat shaming. Why do I say this? There's Adele. She comes out, she posts a picture of herself. She's lost a ton of weight. She looks great. She looks healthier. Meanwhile, of course, she gets the necessary pushback on Twitter from the intersectional types saying, hey, you know, don't just because you lost the weight, that makes other people look bad. That makes other people feel like they're not enough. You are fine as you are. You are fine as a fat slob. We should all embrace each other as to who we are. Yes, you can embrace the person. You can embrace who they are on the inside. But nevertheless, the outside is a reflection of how you feel inside. I know for a fact that there are lots of people that eat a ton because it makes it changes their body chemistry and makes them feel and it makes them more able to cope with the emotions that they have, with the negative emotions. It's an outlet for them. Similarly, there are people like me that go running every single day because it makes us feel good. It makes me feel good. It's like in a positive addiction where the endorphins flow into me easily and effortlessly and I feel great when I do it and when I don't. I don't feel so good. It is a reflection of who we are as people. But nevertheless, we are all supposed to embrace and say that everything is equally as good as something else. When somebody is fat and obese, and again, I'm not trying to call you in particular out. I'm speaking about in general. When people are fat and obese, it reflects something about them. It reflects their energy levels. It reflects their health as a person and likely going forward. If you're fat, you're much like, more likely to suffer from diabetes. Similarly, even today with COVID right now, you are much more at risk, unfortunately, because of your obesity levels, meaning that you're a less desirable partner because you're more susceptible to disease that we're going to have to, to take care of you as a society, as a partner, as a loved member of our family. So we want the best for you. We want to shame you into action. It acts as a lever. I'm not saying that it's the greatest thing, but it's necessary sometimes in order to get people to move and behave. Right now, you have people bringing their dogs onto airplanes, people that clearly are okay by themselves to be able to move around. I'm not talking about blind people or people with uh, autism that benefit from having dogs, and there are studies that generally show it. We're talking about the selfish people that bring their dogs just because they want to have their dogs. They get a fake note from their doctor, and because we're so supposed to be so accepting as a society, there's no shaming these individuals. Shame has gone by the wayside. Shame is being thrown in the gutter and never to be used again because who are you to shame somebody else? There are things in this world that are better than others, and this we have to take into account. Being fit is going to lead to a superior life than if you're morbidly obese. Am I speaking out of turn? Do we not want the best for you when we say, hey, get out there and do something? You don't look so great. So when Adele loses weight and then people push back against Adele, it's, there's virtue signaling is what it is. We're showing you, hey, I'm accepting of you. I love you. I fit in. Adele loses the weight. Let's applaud her. Let's say you look great, Adele. I still hope you can hit that high note. You're an amazing sinner. singer. She is. Might be a sinner too, but she's an amazing singer. 100%. I love her music. Good for you. I hope that you feel great. I hope that you have more energy. Let's shame people into being a better version of themselves. It acts as leverage. It acts as a lever. But in today's society, we're supposed to cast... No blame, especially if you are on the intersectional charts. You can cast all the blame you want at a white, heterosexual, cis male. You can do that. The more successful, the better. The more blame you can cast on them for stuff that they have no control over, that they weren't even a part of. You can cast blame on them for slavery, even if somebody like me who didn't even have anybody in the country during the time that slavery was ongoing. You can cast that blame at me and demand reparations at me and say that you as a white cisgender male are evil. But I can't look at somebody who's fat and say, hey, I want the best for you. You know, do something because it doesn't look right. No, no shame. 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 Let's go back to that. Let's go back to casting a little bit of shame on people who bring their dogs on airplanes who might need a push in the right direction. It's not healthy to be fat, and anybody who tells you to be fat and that body positivity goes against what we're currently seeing with COVID and the fact that you are more susceptible to it, to death, 
from it. That it is a pre-existing condition. It's so funny. I heard about a somebody in England who had died of COVID who was 34 years old, and people were bemoaning it and said that they had she had no pre-existing condition. And when you saw a picture of her, she was like 370 pounds. That is a pre-existing condition. That does make you more susceptible. So my goal is to motivate you to be the better version of yourself. And just to tell you, yeah, it doesn't look great. And the reason that we don't interpret fat as looking great is because it's not healthy. And it's not something that anybody desires. Societal shame, where laws cannot come in, where law rule of law has broken down, is part of what keeps us together as a society. Shame is not an instrument that we throw out entirely. Anybody disagrees with me, by all means, leave a comment. And again, I just want everybody to be the best version of themselves, and there's certainly leverage to get me to be a better version of myself. And I'm always looking for that. So peace out. Leave a comment. Challenge you. God bless. Peace.